the idea that consumerism is an addictive illness in the same way as alcoholism. They often say with alcoholism, you take the alcohol away, you're left with the ism. And the ism stands for I self, me, or I sabotage myself. And I thought consumerism was in exactly the same mold. I uh, just wondered how you felt about that. <laughs> oh dear. Um, yeah, God. That's, uh, okay, well, if you look at the history of the Green Movement, there has always been an incredibly strong, puritanical, ascetic, party-pooping tendency which has celebrated the prospect of having miserable lives. <laughs> and it is quite strong, and a lot of people do kind of get their rocks off in terms of thinking of the level of penal servitude that they can condemn people to by, by imposing sustainability on them. Now, I'm not saying that was in your mind at all, but there are those who think that the act of consumption, when it's scaled up to become a great global force in the shape of consumerism, is by definition life-threatening and life-destroying. And somewhere between individual personal acts of consumption and consumerism as an ideological force for economic progress in the world today is a better balance about how we as individuals use our purchasing power to make our lives better without making anybody else's life worse. And right now, consumerism, as a big macroeconomic force, is really bad at helping people to make those balanced preferences in their own use of their purchasing power. And sometimes I think that leaves people feeling very disempowered as to whether they have any role at all in their own life as a consumer. So for me, it's about finding somewhere in between personal, more responsible, more sustainable consumption and understanding the power of macroeconomic forces in a different way. So 